Welcome back to the Irregular Pioneer channel. I'm your host, Matt, and thank you for joining me for another episode. So what I wanted to talk about today was three basic ways in which the Watchtower organization proves that they care more about image rather than helping people. Now, if you have been part of the organization for any amount of time, that might be obvious to you. But for some people who are like true blue believers, that might seem, you know, like a ridiculous idea to them. No, of course. I mean, helping people is, is what, what we're all about. That's, that's what we do. And listen, I at one time did believe that myself. I truly thought that I was doing my best to help people in this world the best way possible by going out in the ministry and preaching and being active in the congregation, right? But there are some things that the organization does from an institutional level, from high up, that prove that image in many cases is much more important than actually helping people. And I picked three specific ways. So we're going to talk about those three ways. And the first of which I'd like to talk about is their usage of conventionally attractive people. Now, of course, everyone's opinion of what makes a person attractive is different. But we know that there is a certain mold for what is considered attractive or pretty or beautiful. And if you pay close attention to the Watchtower's videos and magazine covers and pictures for years and years and years, you will see the same mold of a person. Generally, uh, when we're talking about men, usually tall, head full of hair, slender for women, same thing, you know, nice long hair, slender. Uh, you know, very often uh, they use people with a fair complexion, uh, fair, which is a problematic term. But anyway, now that's not to say that they don't use darker skinned people, but very often they lean on using fair skinned people. I mean, look at any drama that they've produced, uh, the ones that were supposed to take place in biblical times. Apparently, there's no dark skinned people in the biblical times, but that's another story for another day. If you notice, almost never do you see a plus size person used in videos or in pictures. Now, why is that? I mean, because let's think about this honestly. If the point is to appeal to everyone, you're telling me a plus size person doesn't want to see themselves represented when they pick up a Jehovah's Witness magazine and think, hey, I could be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. You're telling me plus size people don't have good experiences to tell people on JW broadcasting and at circuit assemblies and district conventions. I mean, think about this. Honestly, when was the last time it, I mean, think about all the conventions and assemblies you went to? When was the last time you saw a fat person interviewed or used in a demonstration? And I guarantee you that if you did think of someone, it was probably the brother giving the talk. Because when it comes to brothers giving talks, they, hey, listen, they'll, they'll let them older fat brothers slide. But they particularly use this when it comes to women. And... If you think it doesn't come from an institutional level, if you think it doesn't come from up top, I'd like you to listen to this. This comes from the Circuit Overseer Guidelines Handbook. Now, this is from the 2016 edition. I believe that is the most recent edition. This is from Chapter 3, Paragraph 10, and it's talking about uh, assemblies and uh, picking people for interviews and experiences and things of that sort. And I quote, Participants in demonstrations and interviews should be exemplary in Christian living, and their appearance should not detract from the program. For example, if a brother is so extremely overweight that others would be distracted if he had a part on the program, good judgment would need to be used in deciding whether to give him an assignment, even though he might be otherwise qualified. Now, again, 
if the most important thing is preaching and teaching the good news of the kingdom, what does it matter what a person looks like? There's also a huge issue in that it says if a brother is so extremely overweight that others would be distracted if he had a part in the program, how do you gauge that? What What is the the way you measure someone being extremely overweight? I mean, that's a very relative way of judging someone. You know, a skinny circuit overseer might see someone who's, you know, 210 pounds is extremely overweight. So how, how do you judge that? And I mean, first things first, if you're supposed to be a true Christian, what happened to not judging people? I, I don't know. That seems that's the first thing that should jump out to everyone. And I mean, what if uh, an extremely overweight person had a really great experience in the ministry that witnesses could benefit from and it would be great for them to be interviewed on the circuit assembly. So you're just supposed to ignore their experience and take someone with a lesser experience or, you know, just use a stock experience from a, a watchtower magazine because you can't put a fat person on stage. What does that have to do with showing true love and Christianity? I thought love never fails. Apparently it does if you're fat. Good job, Jehovah's Witnesses. So here's the second way that Jehovah's Witnesses care more about image than helping people. Jehovah's Witnesses will exploit tragic situations to help Jehovah's Witnesses, but not worldly people. What do I mean? Well, take for example, when there is a natural disaster. Jehovah's Witnesses are well known for their relief work amongst Jehovah's Witnesses. Because what Jehovah's Witnesses will not do is go out of their way to help those evil worldly people. Now, to a certain extent, I get it. You help your people first or whatever. I mean, I don't necessarily agree, but I guess I can understand that line of thinking. You know, if if I was out somewhere in public with my family and there was some kind of emergency, yeah, I'd look for my wife and my daughter first and then try to help others. Okay, I get that. But if there's a hurricane and people's houses have been destroyed or damaged severely, why would you only help Jehovah's Witnesses? And I'm not saying that in every circumstance Jehovah's Witnesses have only helped Jehovah's Witnesses, but many times Jehovah's Witnesses do only help Jehovah's Witnesses. I remember being out in the ministry one time and someone, uh, me and my cousin were at the door, and someone mentioned to us, oh, well, why do Jehovah's Witnesses only help Jehovah's Witnesses when there's a hurricane? Because I had some family down in New Orleans during Katrina. And, you know, them Jehovah's Witnesses, they helped out everybody who's Jehovah's Witnesses. But my cousin was poor. She needed help. And ain't nobody help her. And, you know, we were stumbling over our words. We sound like Porky Pig because we couldn't think of a good excuse. But, I mean, the man made a really good point. And it's funny because Jehovah's Witnesses will criticize in, in their magazines. I've heard it numerous times in public talks. They will criticize other Christian religions and their charities and, you know, make it seem like this, this charity is useless and they're all corrupt. But, you know, you take groups like uh, the Red Cross and the Salvation Army. And I mean, there are other, you know, Christian charities. Those are just really big names. And. When there is some kind of, you know, natural disaster, they will help everybody in the community. Doesn't matter if you're Christian, atheist, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Wiccan, doesn't matter. They help everybody. If there is a block with 10 houses, if one person on that block is Christian, doesn't matter. They're helping rebuild all 10 houses. But Jehovah's Witnesses... Listen, and and don't be uh, an active Jehovah's Witness or, or, you know, one of them Jehovah's Witnesses that, you know, what do they call them? A, a memorial attender. They only come to the memorial. Phew. Good luck getting your house fixed. You know that again. If you really want to help people, how can you be so stingy with your help? And I mean, one of the most repeated 
scriptures for any Christian, not just Jehovah's Witnesses. I heard it a lot as a Jehovah's Witness, but every Christian loves quoting the scripture. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 39. You must love your neighbor as yourself. How are you loving your neighbor as yourself if you're not providing basic human help for them? But, you know, image more important than actually helping people. So let's go to the third thing that I think this is very important. If, and you've heard me talk about it on this channel before. If you've been watching me from the beginning, Jehovah's Witnesses do not allow women to teach from the platform. Now, the easy uh, pushback to this point would be, well, listen, the, the Bible says, you know, in first Timothy chapter two and first Corinthians chapter 14, that women should be silent and women should not be teaching. All right. I mean, that's what the Bible says, but there are a lot of things that the Bible says that are just not really paid attention to in this modern day and age. Let's just be honest here. Every Christian group plays a la carte with the Bible. They pick and choose the things that they like to fit their doctrine. I mean, listen, even the most strict Christian groups are not following the Bible 100%. That's just the truth. And every Christian group has adapted their Christianity to modern times, except maybe, you know, the Amish and the Mennonites. But even they, in some ways, you know, have adapted to uh, the times in which that their groups were created. And there are a lot of things in the Bible that just wouldn't fly today. For example, uh, slavery, <laughs> um, killing people for adultery, especially women, uh, asking for people to have, uh, have generational curses or generational punishment. Um, oh, here's a particular one that I, I jotted down. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 5. Males are literally worth more in terms of money than women. Eesh. Um and it's funny, people often say, well, well, listen, that's just the Old Testament, right? That's just the Hebrew scriptures. I mean, Ephesians chapter six and verse five, that's the New Testament. It talks about slavery. So there are a lot of things in the Bible that in the modern day just don't cut it, you know, just not acceptable. And every Christian group is playing it the way they want to. So if you're going to ignore all those other things, why not let women teach from the platform? Why not let women give talks and be ministerial servants and elders? I mean, you're seriously telling me that women don't have anything to bring to these talks. They don't have different perspectives that will help. I mean, again, if your interest is preaching and teaching the good news of the kingdom and helping everyone to learn about Jehovah God and the, the great promises that you believe the Bible is offering, why aren't you letting everyone preach? I mean, and anyone who's been part of Jehovah's Witness organization or even just visited a kingdom hall knows that the majority of the organization is women. I mean, they always mention that script, scripture that uh, the women are a large army, but they know the women are a large army but they still cut their their pool of uh, useful, you know, uh, workers, I mean, dramatic to a dramatically small level to only use men, even though women are the majority of the organization. So, again, they're more concerned with the image of being different from other Christian churches and sticking so strictly to the Bible's words about not letting women teach that they refuse to let women be in posi positions of privilege and teaching positions in the congregation because it's so very important for Jehovah's Witnesses to seem different from the rest of Christendom or Babylon the Great. And if you pay attention to Jehovah's Witness history, looking back to especially when uh, Joseph Rutherford took over as the president of the organization. That's when you really see a huge uh, distinction in Jehovah's Witnesses and other Christian religions. Jo Joseph Rutherford made it very clear that he wanted 
Joe, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or the Bible students, as they were known early in his presidency, to be different from other Christian religions. And that's mostly why you have the prohibition on holidays and birthdays and things of that sort, because Jehovah's Witnesses do other pagan things. But it's the interest in being different from Christendom that Jehovah's Witnesses are really uh, focused on. But those are just three things. There are many other things that could be mentioned. Please, in the comments, uh, let me know some other things that you think might be examples of Jehovah's Witnesses caring more about image than actually helping people. Those are just some things that were on my mind. Thank you again for watching. Uh, if you enjoy the videos that I put out, please like, subscribe, and share videos on uh, you know, your various social networks and share them with people that uh, you talk to and you care about. And uh, something else that I would like to ask of the viewers, I want to do a video in the near future where I just answer some questions from uh, my commenters. You know, So if you have any questions, uh, they could be XJW related, they could be you know, in other topics of, of other religions, they could be uh, more centered around my experience as serving as an elder or experience from serving as a regular pioneer, whatever. Shoot some questions at me in the comment section. I'll note some down and I'll try to answer them in, in my next video or an upcoming video. All right. Well, thanks again for watching the Irregular Pioneer channel. I'm your host, Matt. I appreciate your time. Be well, everyone.